How is everyone? Everyone well? I'll just wait a couple of seconds just to see if anyone else turns up. Give them one more minute and then we'll, we'll crack on. We're, I'm going to make it a very practical session because um, it's an hour and a half, but actually you'd be surprised when we know how quickly the time goes when we do a, an hour and a half session. Um, so make sure you've got a lot of space around you, space where you can be quiet, space where you can swing your arms around without knocking furniture over or knocking people over. And also we'll be doing some sitting, resting posture as well. Okay, let's crack on. So if anybody, to, if anybody jumps in, uh, they, can, uh, they can join the session. So what I wanted to do today is very much based on the work we are doing in the classes on a Tuesday morning and a Thursday morning, but just looking in a little bit more detail. And one of the things I've, I've, I've learned, again, teaching uh, the breath and breath work is how complex it is. It's not simple because we can have conscious control over our breathing, which is great because that can then make an effect on our body and our minds in a specific way. But a lot of breath work is that unconscious control. So it's actually for me, I'm finding it is just tuning in, noticing what's going on with the breath. So it's almost the bits that are going on when you're not exercising or what you're not doing the when you're not doing the practice. So what I want to play around with and explore today is areas where we take conscious control of the breath, bring that into functional movement, but really spending that time to, to actually just tune in and listen to your body. It's the most difficult thing to do because we always want to be in control. So I really want to explore that and spend time doing that today. What is great about doing that in a Zoom session is that you're in your own comfortable environment. So it's actually, I found this easy with clients on a Zoom session because we're not in a class or you're not in a, in a classroom situation or a studio situation where you're aware of other people. So please feel free if you want to at some point just turn the camera, your camera off. But I will like, I do want to make this interactive. So I will be stopping and talking and chatting and asking for your comments and feedback. Don't feel you have to comment or have to feedback or have to feel anything. Uh, if you're not feeling anything, if it's bits aren't working, then then that's just fine. It's it's not a, it's not a competition to say you have to feel like this. Um, as you as you know, all of you know, I teach the oxygen advantage uh, technique. And one of the things I've noticed again with a lot of clients is because we focus on this functional element of easy nasal breathing, we can often miss out the other elements of the breath and. I want to focus today on obviously the calming breath, so the breath and allowing our body and mind to calm and relax, but also the energizing breath, so how to prepare yourself for when you want to have that good stress to actually, if you're, say, if you're running or you're running a race, so you're prepared for it, but still in control of the breath, and also releasing. So this is something I've been exploring a lot in terms of my own personal practice, is that letting go and releasing and using actual sounds to help relax the body and release tension in the mind and the body. If you think of it as a sigh, a sigh is, a, is your body's natural way of, of releasing stress, of releasing tension. And we look at a sigh and we say, actually, a sigh is dysfun could be dysfunctional breathing. But that is just the part of what is creating that sigh. So it's almost like the bit before of, uh, that is creating the sigh. So it's the stressful situation that is creating the sigh. So it's a bit like taking a tablet for a headache or something. Is We don't just want to stifle the sigh. We want to work on what is going on before the sigh. The sigh is quite a negative sense of, oh, God, stressful situation. So what I want to do today is explore some positive releases of, of sound to actually help bring the body into relaxation and also release uh, so that's something that really, in terms of the oxygen advantage, we don't go into a great detail uh, with. So that will be interesting to play around with. I do want to just do a very, very quick introduction of everybody. So 
Uh, how many have we got? Oh, that's that's good because I had lots on the on the list. I'm not saying it's good that the people on, the, on who had booked in aren't watching, um, but we haven't got loads of people. So I was thinking, how are we going to do all of those introductions? So if we just quickly run through the group, we don't have to go in details, but it's nice because I want you to all communicate and, and, and chat to each other. So if we go go around the group, let's start with Paul, if that's okay. So just who you are, where you're at, what you do. Well, hopefully we'll add some more uh, nuances today and some more new stuff today as well. So I've got a few little new exercises for us all to practice. Um, good, 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 good. Um, let's see where we're at now. So we're going to start off with a sitting. So you can pop your mics off. You're all you're all mic'd off and everything like that. So that's fine. As I say, we'll work through a few little practices, explore a bit, and then I'll I'll come back to you again and 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 get your feedback. Again, you don't have to give feedback. So don't feel you have to have something to say at the end of each session. It's very 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 informal. It's just if you if you do want something to share with the group, that's that's the whole point. Um, so we'll start off in a, in a sitting position. So just get yourself comfortable. And you can, if you're sitting on the floor, then just be in a comfortable position where you can sit com care comfortably on the floor. Uh, or if you've got a chair, then you're in a position where you're comfortable on the chair. So not creating any excess tension or stress and strain. Quick body scan, so check in with where your feet are. So your feet are in contact with the ground. So just be aware of the feet. And you can close your eyes if you want to close your eyes, if you're comfortable closing your eyes. If you don't want to close your eyes, then that's fine. Just whatever feels, whatever feels right and good for you uh, at this moment in time. So just scan up the body, lower legs, knees, thighs. And this is very much a tuning in practice. So we're just seeing what's going on, not doing anything, not trying to achieve anything, not trying to do anything, uh, but just checking in. Bring awareness to the, the hips, the pelvis. And then feel that strength of the, of the surface that you're supported by. So really be confident that you're stable on that surface that you're supported by. So you're grounded and stable. Now focus on your spinal alignment, so lengthen through the spine. And just be aware of that, the strength of that spinal alignment. So where you need to be strong. And a really good visualization is just to be lifted gently from the crown, almost as if you've got a string lifting you gently from the crown of the head. But where can you be soft? So you're lengthening upwards through the spine, but you're actually letting go and relaxing shoulders, rib cage. Again, this is just tuning in, being aware. Can you sense that? Yeah. 
bring an awareness to the forehead, the eye sockets, the face muscles, the lips, jaw, position of the tongue in your mouth. And then awareness to the breath. So wherever you sense the breath, So how is your body breathing? Where do you feel that? You may feel it in the lips, you may feel it in the nostrils, belly, chest, back of the body. Again, it's just tuning in, checking in. If you feel any areas where you might be feeling a little bit of tension, tightness then do feel free to move around a little bit and, and release any areas where you feel you might be having any excess stress and strain or excess tension in the body, muscular tension. And then just bring your attention back to the breath, just noting making a mental note of where you really feel that awareness of the breath. So the idea of this practice is just to check in with our current state. How are we feeling at the minute? How are we sensing at the minute? Is our breath calm? Is it soft? Is it maybe a little bit quick, a little bit chaotic? Again, we're not changing anything at all. We're just checking in with our current state. And that will vary. It will vary throughout the day, of course. Staying with our attention on the breath, I'd like you to notice now where the breath first enters uh, the body. So that where we take energy into the body. Energy is taken into the body through the breath. We're bringing oxygen into the body. So notice in the, in the nose, really good, easy place to notice that physical sensation. So just bring your focus to the nose, the nasal cavity. And just sense the air on that inhale. So just notice that air as you breathe in. Not changing the rhythm, not changing the pace, not changing the volume, just checking in. Feel that sensation of the slightly cooler air coming in. So bringing energy into the body. Natural breathing, easy, soft. 
breathing. Just that beginning of the in-breath. Now bring your attention to the top of the in-breath. See what's going on at the top of the in-breath, just before you exhale, just before the breath turns and exhales. Let's go to the other end. So let's go to the bottom of the out breath, so the bottom of the exhale. So again, just checking in, bottom of the exhale. Just paying attention again, not changing anything. And then we'll bring our focus to the end of the exhale. So that slightly, that sense when the air is slightly warmer as it leaves the body. So again, bringing that attention back up to the nostrils at the end of the exhale. And now we are going to add a conscious control at the end of that exhale. So normal breath in, normal breath out. And I want you to notice the pause at the end of that exhale and just extend that for a short period of time. So it's a continuous flow. So you're not blocking or constricting it's a continuous flow, but you just get that sense of suspending. It's almost like relaxing that space. So create space between the breaths. So just in your own time, a normal breath in, normal breath out. We're not changing anything. The only bit we're actually making conscious control of is just really extend, comfortably extend that exhale and then allow the breath to flow back into it. Visualize a wave. So there's that s suspension, stillness, relaxation, and then the breath comes back into the body. So the only bit you're controlling is the end of that exhale. Extend the end of that exhale. And just do that for two or three breaths, feeling comfortable without restriction.
and then just when you're ready just bring your focus back into the space around you have a little stretch if you need a little stretch and don't worry about the next breath being slightly bigger because it will because imagine a wave it's like extend 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 and we're going to do a little we're going to do this with some movement as well so again we'll be working on how you can then use the movement use the diaphragm to help control uh, that exhale because it's is in a way even though it's calming it, it, there is that element of control to it so you do need a little bit of control in that bit fabulous anybody else got any thoughts or comments so the idea of that practice is first of all can you bring awareness to the body without altering the state of the body and particularly with the breath this is the biggest challenging thing is the minute we start talking about breath work and focusing on focusing on the breath then we almost subconsciously take control of the breath so that is the real challenge to actually check in and see whether you can uh, be on unconscious about the breath well it's still, it's still at the same time checking in with it and then the reason why we're adding that extended exhale at the end of the out breath is because this is where we start to work on the biochemistry of breath because this is often part of the breathing elements that is missing when we are working on breath work so we all understand or tend to understand about the biomechanics of breathing it looks as if my camera's gone that's better. That was, that was good. Bring it into focus. Um, we all tend to understand about the biomechanics of breathing uh, and how stress and, and anxiety can affect our breathing, but we very rarely are aware of the biochemistry of breath. So the, the, the purpose of that extended breath hold is to give you an idea of almost like a sense of, I could do with taking another breath, because that's going to help to reset the brain to tolerate a certain amount of buildup of CO2 within the blood. Uh, without getting too technical, as I say, I want this to be a very practical workshop, is that we tend to think that if we, if we take in a bigger breath, we're going to get more oxygen into our body. And the fact that we need to breathe is because we're trying to get oxygen into the body. But unless you're at a stage where you are extremely ill or about to die, it's not oxygen, it's not the lack of oxygen that tells your body to take a next breath. It's the body telling you, I want to get rid of the buildup of carbon dioxide. So that's quite important, even from a psychological point of view. So why, uh, Yvonne, you're most probably challenged a little bit of that is because it's, you're, you're having to work with, with the biomechanics, but also you're getting that buildup of, of, of CO2. So you're wanting to get rid of that to take the next breath in. So that's just the biochemistry that we're working on there. So it's a really simple way of building our tolerance to the buildup of, of carbon dioxide. And by doing that, the consequence of that is that you'll reduce the idea of getting out of breath. So if you can get more tolerant to the buildup of CO2, it's going to take you longer when, you start, when we start to do some movement to get out of breath. It's a bit like training building weights or lose using your more weights to build muscle you're getting your muscle adapted to a heavier weight we're getting our body adapted to a, a, a slightly raised level of carbon dioxide the trick in that exercise as well or in that practice is if it starts to feel too stressful you've gone too far with it so that's why that's quite a challenging exercise because first of all we've got to notice and do nothing and then we've got to challenge ourselves in terms of getting that light air hunger but not going into stress not going into that fight or flight so that's the purpose of, of that little practice there uh, any other thoughts or comments that you want to make or ask me about that good let's go into standing so find a, a really comfortable place where you've got space around you so we're going to look at um, release uh, and this is something that, um, in terms of practice, I'm really exploring. Um, because again, when I was talking about like sighing, it's almost like that letting go, letting go. And actually, there's quite a lot of research around sound in terms of how that helps you relax and release. 
So there's a, the nerve, there's a big nerve that runs through the body called the vagus nerve. And that connects mind or, or brain to heart and to diaphragm. And if, if you've got what is called good vagal tone, it means that it can help bring you into relaxation and the rest and recovery part of the nervous system. So if we look at the nervous system, you've got fight or flight, I'm going to fight, I'm going to fly. Or you've got the other side, which is rest and recovery, bringing your body into a state of rest and recovery. If we have that sort of like chronic tension and everything's up here and everything's in sort of like, oh, a little bit fight or flight, a little bit fight or flight, a little bit fight or flight, and we never let go, then it's going to affect the breath. And then that is going to affect the mental attitude. It's going to affect the whole body. So we want that release. So this is going back to what I was saying in terms of the sigh. So here's some really, really simple practice for releasing any tension in the mind, in the body. So we start off by shaking. Now we've done this, we do this on a Tuesday and a Thursday morning, so you all understand this one. But I really want you to take your time to really feel that vibration through the body. So shake the wrist, pump the legs. And particularly shoulders. So again, here where we hold a lot of tension, back of the neck, back of the head, feel that vibration running through the body. And just for the minute, just breathing easy in and out through the nose. So just breathe naturally again, just as you were doing at the start of that sitting position. And if you feel comfortable, you can bang your heels on the ground. So I'll show you from the side just knocking your heels into the ground because that really does create some good, good vibrations through the body. You should come all the way up the shoulders. Again, you can hear it in my voice. See if you can feel the spine. Obviously, with any of the practices we're doing today, if you feel any pain or if it causes any tightness or unnecessary tension, then you just stop. And then just take a little rest a minute, shake the legs out. Now we're going to bring the breath into it. So we're going to breathe in through the nose and we're going to breathe out with a sound. Now the sound, I'd quite like it to be whatever works for you, but what is good is something like a, an ah sound, because you can go, ah. It's like a, a really positive ah, oh, end of the day. Kick your shoes off if you've been wearing shoes during the day. So shaking and vibration. Use the heels if you want to use the heels into the ground. Breathe in through the nose. And ah. So here you can increase the volume of air that you breathe in through the nose. Breathe in through the nose. And ah, let go, really feel that relaxation. If you're feeling a little bit tight in the shoulders, then you can breathe out from the shoulders. So in through the nose and just completely let go. Ah, Let's do two more. Breathe in when you're ready. And then slow it down. And just take a minute just to feel. I feels really nice. Feel the vibration through the body. Feel the tingling sensations. Just let the breath calm. Nice. Step about shoulder width apart. Another release, 
palms facing up towards the sky. Now here what is a really good thing to be aware of is when you bring the palms up, watch that you're not hiking the shoulders. So actually let the shoulders drop and just feel the weight of the arms and the shoulders. So it's almost like you're holding something up. And then just let the arms go. And again, you can use a, a vocalized out. So you could, or you could, whatever feels right, whatever feels right to you. Or if it just feels more comfortable to use that vocal, the, the sound out through the nose, use the sound out through the nose. But if you feel you want to let go through the mouth, raise the arms up. And just let it go. One more time, raise the arms up, heavy arms, shoulders relax. Just let that go, let the shoulders relax, let go. So a real intention of the practice is to release, to let go, to let it all out. Now we can add some rotation into that. So the arms come up, I'm gonna show you in slow motion. Uh, and I'll mirror you, so you're going to rotate to your right, drop the right arm behind and the left arm up in front. And then you come back to center and then drop and rotate and then just bring that into swing. So here you're going, let go, let go. Completely let go. We're getting some nice spine rotation here as well. Great again for relaxing the shoulders, releasing any tension in the neck, in the upper back. Let go, let go with the breath. Use the breath to release tension. Breath to release tension in the mind and in the body. <sighs> any stress you've been having this morning, like having to do a running workshop, just let go, let go. and then just slow it down and then come bring the feet together. See what that feels like in the body. It's always nice to take that space in between to sense what you feel maybe has changed, maybe what hasn't changed, but just what you feel after you've done a particular practice. So the idea there is to use that exhale, exhale through the mouth, letting go, releasing, releasing any tension. If you think of, of crying or being angry or anything like that, there's that release after the end of that. And that's because it's your body going, right, I've had enough of the, the um, uh, fight or flight and need to come into rest and recovery. So we're just bringing ourselves into rest and recovery. And again, there's all of the science behind that, which is the fascinating stuff. This is stuff that's come out over, over the years. Whereas before you might think, oh, it's all woo-woo because we're focusing on the breath and doing these releasing practices. But you're activating, you're, you're helping to encourage the vagal tone because you're using diaphragm, you're using vocal sounds which activate that vagal, vagus nerve. And then we're using rotation through the spine, which is releasing tension in the shoulders. So you're releasing that physical tension, but you're also bringing your body back into balance from a, from a physiological point of view as well. Let's just place our hands now over our belly. Just bring awareness to that point.
Do a quick body scan again, just to make sure you're not holding any excess tightness or rigidity or tension. So you may want to just sway a little bit forwards and backwards, side to side. And we will focus now on a little bit more on the biomechanics of breathing, the breathing muscles, where we can, how we can move to create space in this rib cage to allow the breath to be calm and smooth and easy and effortless as much as possible. So place now your right hand on your belly. I'm mirroring you. So place your right hand on your belly, left hand just on the heart center on the sternum here. And again, just check in to start off with what's, what, what you sense, what you feel. It might not be what you expect, so don't have a preconceived idea of what you need to feel or what you should be feeling. See what you are actually feeling, how your body is actually breathing, how your body is actually moving as you breathe in this standing position. Now we're going to add some conscious control into the breath by, first of all, slowing the breath down. So we're deliberately slowing the breath cycle down. And at the same time, we'll be increasing the volume. So it's really slow the breath down. But then on the inhale, take a fuller breath. Keep it all in and out through the nose. And then slow the exhale. So this is deliberate conscious control. Slow the exhale. In and out through the nose. Slow the inhale. In through the nose. Slow the exhale out through the nose. Now, I'm deliberately not giving you a count because I want you to go to your own comfortable place. So if the breathing starts to get wobbly, starts to get a bit chaotic, then you just take a rest. You take a rest from this. But I just want you to see if you can control that slow, smooth, fluid inhale. Slow, smooth, fluid, exhale. Let's just do two more in your own time. And then when you've done that, just let the arms rest by the side. Shake out the legs a little bit. Move around a little bit if you need to move around a little bit if you're feeling tightness or tension anywhere. Then when you're ready, come back to standing. And this time you're going to, I'll mirror you again, left hand on sternum. This time you're going to put your right hand the back of the body, so right across here on the kidneys, right across the back of the body there. Tune in first. And now we'll take that conscious control again. So you're going to increase the volume on the inhale. So you're going to slow, deep 
breath in and then slow controlled exhale through the nose Slow, deep breath in. Slow, exhale out. See if you can fill the lungs, but without tension, without stress. So just getting a, ni a nice large volume, slowly into the lungs. all that space, notice what's going on in the back of the body and then breathe out through the nose. Let's do one more in your own time. And then when you've done that, just let the arms rest by the side and again, just shake out. Good, take a little bit of a breather there. Breathe, that's a good word. <laughs> take, a, take a breath there. Any thoughts or comments on that little uh, practice there? Again, if, you've, if you feel you've got anything you wanna share, what you notice, something that you notice that you might not have thought you would notice. That, that's nice, an in interesting point, I think, yeah, because we're taking in a true deep breath there, but it's not a stressful deep breath. I think what tends to happen is people think a deep breath is all about <gasps> filling everything up here um, or just filling everything down here and not up here. So what I really wanted to get across there is that it's three-dimensional and that it does expand in 3D and also in the back. Anybody with the point on the back, that's interesting when you actually put, the, put your hand on the back. Did anybody notice anything or not notice anything when, when we swap from the belly to the back? That's good actually because we can often quite tighten up in the back. So we, we, we're always talking about belly breathing, breathe into the belly, fill the air with belly, which again, you know, from the classes, I will say there's no way you can fill the air with belly. So we fill the belly with air. I always say the air with belly. If we are focusing on the front of the body all the time, we forget about the back of the body. What you could do there, and we can all have a little play around with this, is actually you can tilt forward slightly. So you can bend the knees. And if you come into a slight tilt forwards, what is interesting is if you go like this, there's no way you can get breath into the back of the, of the spine. If you actually keep that spine neutral, see so if you can then breathe into the back of the body. So this is where a fuller breath isn't a problem if you slow it down. We're not over breathing if you slow the breath down and you control the breath. If we're over breathing, you would be doing a quicker breath and you'd be most probably pulling all of the breath up into the upper chest. But that's really nice to breathe into the back of the body. The thing to watch here, again, is if we are tight in the thoracic spine, we were talking about this at the running workshop this morning, um, it's watch that your head doesn't pull forward, that you really keep that head. It's a challenge for me, I'm tight here. A lot of us get tight in that thoracic spine. Pull the chin back a little bit and just keep that spine long. And suddenly you go, wow, I can feel breath in the back of my body. We'll stick with the biomechanics and then we'll do some energy breaths. How are we doing time-wise? That's good. Good, 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 good. 
This is just an extension, and, and Rebecca mentioned it there in terms of the flexion and the extension through the spine. It's feet hip width apart, sorry, shoulder width apart, slightly turned out. We'll go through the movement first, and then we will add the breath to it. So just follow the movement first. I'll just stand the back a little bit so you can see a little bit clearer. So a little bit of bend in the knees. It's almost like you're picking something up from the ground, coming up, and then you're looking up, and then you're holding something above your head with your hands, and then it's coming back, down. So it's just up, hold, come back down. So you're putting something up on the shelf, up, let's coordinate the breath with it. So you're going to breathe in through the nose, in, 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 and back down, out. Smooth, fluid, flowing movement, continuous movement, smooth, fluid, continuous breathing. We're not counting reps. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Let's add a little pause or a little suspension at the top of the breath. So you're breathing in. You're going to pause, just bring the shoulder, elbows back a little bit, almost open up a little bit. See if you can get a little more breath deep into the body. Pause and then breathe out. Now keep doing that, watch from the side. So watch when you're breathing in. The bit we have to be careful of here is when we do the let's try and get a little bit more breath in is that we don't compress there because we want that breath into the back of the body as well. So you're opening up across the front of the chest but you're keeping the space in the back of the body as well. It should feel really nice and then breathe out. Let's do a couple more like that. So you're breathing in, so the spine is extending, 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 still extending, breathing in, little bit of extra breath. You can pull the elbows back a little bit, get some more space in the ribs, and breathing out. Let's do two more like that. Breathing in, use the lower body. You can sink down, shoulders down, shoulders down, shoulders down. Open up, hold a little bit, suspend, breathe out. And what is really nice is almost visualize you're bringing, as you're bringing the hands up, the breath is going down. So you're extending the spine. Watch the shoulders don't start rising. Open up. Breathe in. Soften, soften, soften. Breathe out. You're almost coming into that flexed position. Do one more. And then take a rest there. So my screen froze then. I don't know if it scrolls, scrolls, froze for you, but hopefully you didn't just stop with the movement. Keep that movement fluid. This is what we're looking for. We were looking for flow 
of movement, flow of breath. No blockages. Blockages is where you have tightness, restriction. So the more you can practice these slow, fluid movement, slow, sl slow fluid <laughs> breath practice, the more then when you speed up that movement, when we go running or when you do a brisk walk, you still got that fluidity to your movement. What is nice, next one, similar to that one, but we're just going to use the sides of the body to breathe into. So you come up with the, I'm going to mirror you, you come up with the right hand, push down with the left and just reach over and breathe into the side and the back. And then hands cross in the middle, so you almost like do a little spiral. Right hand goes down to the ground, left hand to the sky, breathe into the side. Open up the ribs, breathe into the side and the back. And then swap. Do -do 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 -do. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, and in, and out. Keep the movement fluid, so don't think of stretching. You're just getting to that point that of stop, and then you're coming back down. Continuous movement rather than pulling and stretching. Breathing smooth, movement smooth. And then just bring the arms by the side. Give your body a little bit of a shake. So this is a really good, again, you could use that as part of a warm up. It's to get the rib cage open, to get the diaphragm working, to release any tightness or tension in the body. So it's just working on, we often think of the biomechanics of breathing as just being the diaphragm. So let's just practice using the diaphragm or let's just practice the ribs swing out to the side. But this, all of this movement and this reaching and all of this is great for opening up the rib cage, allowing us to breathe more efficiently. Any questions or, or comments on, on that little section? It's, I think it's fascinating, it's a really good point because we tend to think, oh, I need to stretch. So you go, oh yeah, I'll, get, uh, 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 I'll hold the breath and stretch, oh, and this is doing me really good. This is doing me really good. It's, it's pulling your body in the wrong, too far, and the body's not designed to go to the point where you're pulling beyond your range of motion. And that's a really nice point you make, because actually if you breathe into that, it's like, oh yeah, that can settle down, that can settle down, I can reach a little bit more, I can keep that movement going, and then I can come back, and oh, does it feel a little bit different on that side? What's happening to my head on that side? All of those little things you can tune into, so that's an excellent point. Pandiculation is a good word. I've used that a few times in some of my workshops. So when animals stretch, they go, oh, let's wake up and have a nice long cat stretch. They don't go, hoik, let's pull our shoulder out of the, the, the shoulder socket. So stretch is often misinterpreted in pulling and pulling and pulling. So don't stretch, pandiculate. Uh, any other questions or any other thoughts on, the, on that point? Let's, yep, somebody was gonna say something, nope. Let's come back to sitting actually. So come back to your sitting uh, posture. So we've worked on checking in with our current state. So looking a little bit at the biochemistry, how our body is tolerating CO2 levels. Uh, we then look at releasing. So again, this is where we often get it gets misinterpreted to say mouth breathing is bad. It depends on what mouth breathing is. If mouth breathing is running and <sighs> yeah, that, that's not good because that's out of control of the breath. But if mouth breathing is <sighs> let go, <sighs> let go, or <sighs> that out breath 
is 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 good. It it, it releases tension. It releases stress. Uh, I'm working. What I'm in such a great position in terms of the oxygen advantage because I'm working with the coaches. So I'm helping train the coaches. What is brilliant for me is I see coaches, very very skilled people, very very high level yoga instructors, voice coaches, nutritionalists, hockey players, or hockey coaches. So I get all of their input. And what is fascinating, I'm working with a voice coach who um, is quite high level voice coach, working with politicians and, and, and people. And she was looking at the ox, she's doing the oxygen advantage training. She said, you have to breathe out through your mouth. If you're talking, you can't breathe out just through the nose. And you can't talk and then breathe in through the nose and take the next sentence and breathe it because People have been gone home by then. So you have to have that awareness of you can take a breath in through the mouth, but it's not, <gasps> and you can take a breath in through the nose without going, <sighs> because if you just draw breath into the nose, that's worse than taking a calming breath in through the mouth. So it's it's not as black and white as quite often. It's easier for us to think it's black and white. Right, I just need to breathe through the nose and I can't breathe through the mouth. It's the nuances and the subtleties that if you can discover those, that's where you'll get that whole idea of how powerful the breath can be. So we've worked on that release. That release is often a bit that we need to do every day because we have that sense of, of, of slight tension, and not bad tension. Stress is good. Good stress can, needs to be released as well. Let's look now at energy because energy is a, an interesting one in terms of energizing the breath. And one of the techniques that we use in the oxygen to oxygen advantage to, to help create energy is to deliberately stress the cardiovascular system with a stronger breath hold. So we did at the very beginning where we're doing relax and just go for that comfortable pause before you take the next breath in. What I'd like to explore now is just doing a a, a stronger pause at the end. So you're actually, this is a challenging yourself. So you're going to that point where you feel, yeah, I could take a breath, yeah, I could take a breath, yeah, I could take a breath. I need to take a breath now. Now, don't forget that that is not the fact that you're running out of oxygen. You are not going to pass out and you're, you're in control. I'm not saying you have to do it for this count. Thing to be, be aware of here are there are contraindications to this. So if you've got high blood pressure, if you've got any cardiovascular issues, if female, if it's a female, you're pregnant, then you really need to stay clear of the stronger breath holds. If it starts to make you feel dizzy or anything like that, then just stay off the stronger breath holds. You don't have to go to the point where you're going blue. In fact, I don't want that. I want you to get to the point where you can still comfortably take a next breath in, but when you do comfortably, comfortably take that next breath in, it's still through the nose, and it will be a greater volume of air. So let's go back to the beginning where you were just checking in with your body. So your feet are in contact with the ground, nice and tall through the spine. You feel really supported by the surface below you. Just do a quick body scan, release any areas of unnecessary tension or excess stress and strain. Do feel free to move around a little bit. Bring your attention to the breath. So at first we're just noticing, just give yourself time to settle into this. Great place to notice the breath is that physical sensation in the nostrils because you'll feel that slightly cooler air coming in and that slightly warmer air leaving. It's a really easy place to bring your focus. Couple more breath cycles, just tuning into that slightly cooler air coming in through the nostrils, through the nose, slightly warmer leaving. Jaw relaxed, face muscles relaxed, neck relaxed. Spinal alignment strong, shoulders relaxed. Ribs relaxed, face relaxed. A 
Let's go to the end of the exhale and just go to that comfortable pause again. So just tune in with that comfortable pause you did where you just extended. Comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. Take the next breath in. So do a couple of cycles of those. And then when you've done a couple of cycles of those, just let, just breathe easy, just breathe as comfortable as you, as you feel. And then this time when we focus on the end of the exhale, you will extend that end of the exhale just a little bit past your comfortable pause and just challenge yourself a little bit, but without creating stress. If everything comes up here and it starts to get stressful, just take it that far. So just build gradually, extend that comfortable pause and then breathe in again. So let's do three of those. You should feel a slight sense of light air hunger, light, medium, medium to strong air hunger. So you're just creating that sense of, I really could do with taking another breath and then you breathe in. So challenge yourself, but without creating anxiety or stress, too much tightness or stress or any tension. The more you relax into it, the more you'll get the benefit from it. So rather than thinking, this is horrible, think this is nice and relaxing. Enjoy that elongated space. And then when you've done that about three times, just let the body come back to balance, let the breath settle, just breathe easy. It's fascinating that whole psychophysiological aspect of breathing. Um, because as I say, we've got the biomechanics, which we can work on, the biochemistry, we can understand. But actually, if, you, if you're going, this is horrible, your body will respond and your breath will respond. So when, you, when you're in control and you go, actually, I can extend this. And the more I relax into it, I can extend it longer because then you're getting the benefits from that. So again, it all sounds a bit woo-woo, but if you think positively about what you're achieving from doing that, you'll get more benefits from it. And keep it going like that, sort of like, even though you're, you're, even though you're holding the breath in inverted commas, there's still a rhythm, there's still a breathing rhythm going on in the body. So you're not holding and restricting, you're suspending. So the more you think about just suspending, relaxing, enjoying, and then breathe in again. And you're doing your interval training there. So who needs to run up hills? Pfft, nah. So the benefits you're getting from that in a resting posture, in a calm, relaxed, you're still, in, you're still controlling the breath, is you're getting a similar effect on the cardiovascular system 
to actually when you are doing interval training because what is happening is the minute you pause the breath at the end of the exhale your carbon dioxide levels are building up and 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 building up because that's what's saying take an next breath what happens when you're training and you go into that really challenging part of your run your co2 levels are building up your co2 levels are building up you need to exhale 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 so you're getting your body used to that buildup of CO2. The other major benefit you're getting from the breath hold is at the same time as the carbon dioxide levels are going up, your oxygen levels are dropping. Now, again, they're not going to drop to the point where you're going to pass out. So you're, you're in control. So you're dropping your oxygen saturation levels because you're pausing the breath. So that, again, is putting a good stress on the cardiovascular system. And that's really important to understand the, the, the difference between a good stress and a bad stress. If you do too much of that, you will overstress the cardiovascular system. So you'll get people saying, well, actually, I have, I, I have um, sleep apnea, so I'm doing all my breath holds in my sleep. That's not great because you don't know how low you're dropping your oxygen saturation. You don't know how long you're pausing the breath for. So that is with the point where it will then become damaging to the body. So that's why I say there's a lot of contraindications to that is that it can be damaging to the body if you do too much of it or if you're not in the right, if you're not in a good physical state to take that. But just that little teaspoonful of positive stress to create an adaptation in the cardiovascular system. That's all you're doing when you're doing your interval training. But obviously when you're doing your interval training, you're getting that musculoskeletal adaptation as well, which you're not getting when you're doing this in a sitting posture. If you stick to that 80-20 rule, your 80% aerobic training or, or easy nasal breathing, 20% can be more your anaerobic or your more challenging part of your training. These breath holes come in your 20%. So if you've got, if you're doing like an hour's running session, you could add a few breath holds, walking at the end, walking at the beginning as part of that interval. Rather than running up a hill, do some walking breath holds up the hill. So you're going to get as much adaptation from a cardiovascular point of view. So do, do use that element as a 20% of your training. Again, the studies will show this is called intermittent hypoxia because you're dropping your oxygen saturation levels. So you read the studies and they'll say, actually, a certain amount of intermittent hypoxia is good for the body. Too much is not good for the body. But it's the same with exercise. Do too much. Do too much at high intensity is, is damaging to the body. But again, there's no rule to say three minutes of this is good, 10 minutes is bad. It, it very much is individual and the, study, the studies will show that as well. Yeah. We've done a bit of movement here, so we've created more space. So that's going to help with that extended pause. But it will feel different from the beginning because the first time you do it, it you're not getting used to it. Whereas when you get used to it and you, your brain knows, your body knows I can tolerate this, then you can, you can relax into it more, relax into it more, relax into it more. So that's really important points there. There is another way you can do that and we're going to do that in a, in a movement as well. So you can, rather than holding the breath, we can, and actually this, this is really ties in with what Rebecca was just saying there, is because you can extend the exhale. So if you think about swimming, you breathe in and you go under the water, you don't hold the breath, you extend, you use that exhale to extend, extend. It's almost like a power, so that's a powerful out breath with an extension. So let's come up to standing. How are we doing time-wise? Not too bad, actually. Come up to standing. Are you all okay time-wise? We'll do another really simple movement. Keep it simple, 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 simple. I'll show you the movement first, uh, and then you can. we can do it with the breath. So it's similar to what we've done before, you're scooping up almost like picking something up. When we get to chest height, you're actually sliding your hips back and pushing forwards. And then just bring the hands back and down. So it's lift up, push forwards, back, 
So Yvonne, just keep the movement fluid and smooth. So no end stop at the, the end. So this bit, when you're pushing, keep the push slow. It's almost like I'm slow motionly, if that's a word, pushing something away from me. And that's nice. So they're coming back. Back, 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 back. So no strain, really be in control. Be in control of where your center of gravity is. Don't be at that point where you feel as if you might fall forward. So you can bring the hips back a little bit, a little bit more weight through the ankles. Shoulders stay down so we're not hiking the shoulders up. So now we're going to really slow the exhale. So you're going to breathe into here, breathe in through the nose. And then we're going to use the sound on an out breath. So you're going to push out. So it's almost like you're blowing a candle out, then back in. And then breathe in. And blow the candle out. Back in. And just let the breath be natural in between the movements. Now watch me from the side, so you can actually use the breath into the back as you're pushing out. So you're breathing into the back, and then you're pushing out. You can almost go into that flexed position, so you can almost use the ribs to help bring the diaphragm in. I'm exaggerating a little bit there. There's a squirrel watching me. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could show you it. He's sat outside the window watching me doing these weird movements. And um, push out and breathe out. Let's do one more. Breathe in. And then bring the arms to the side and rest. When we are extending that out breath, what I want you to use is these abdominal muscles here to bring the diaphragm back. So this will help, and again, I'm sure Rebecca, when you're swimming, you're thinking of this, is that you're actually, rather than just and deflating, because that would be a little bit quick, is bring the diaphragm back up. So you're going which is why it's quite nice to do almost like that that cat-cow position again, because you're actually bringing the air, helping to bring the air out of the body. Now, another one that you can do also, uh, which is quite fun, because uh, this sort of ties in if you're doing walking and running practice, is do like a slow motion running man. So you can breathe in, opposite arm, opposite leg. So I do it the wrong way around. No, I don't. I was watching in the, in the way. Opposite arm, opposite leg, breathe in and then out. Breathe in. So it's great for balance. Breathe out. Use that diaphragm. Breathe in. Breathe out. and then rest there. So that's quite a nice one just to play around with. And you can alternate it as well. So you could breathe out as you're coming up. So you could breathe in, breathe out. So you can swap it around because again, if you think when you're running, you're not breathing out every single step you take. You'll be breathing out for a certain amount of steps, but then you'll be breathing in for a certain amount of steps. So that's quite a nice one to explore. And one more, just before we finish off, is feet shoulder width apart. So we'll go into uh, a squat uh, movement. Again, just be aware of your balance and make sure that your not, knees aren't dropping in or dropping out. But we'll breathe in as we come up and then slow breath out. It's almost like you're a tiger going to pound. Slow breath out, 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 out. 
just a comfortable space down, comfortable place down. Breathe in, open up, breathe out. Extend that out, breath. One more, breathe in. Breathe out. And then come back up to standing. And just give the body a little bit of a shake. Shake out the legs. Shake out the wrists. Okay, right, well that's great. I would enjoyed it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it too. Hopefully you've got a lot out of it. And if you have got any questions, obviously get back to me. If you've got any feedback, do get back to me. And then I'll hopefully see you on Tuesday uh, for the breathwork class uh, or Thursday for the more movement focused class. And if I don't see you then Yvonne, I'll see you next Saturday for your final run with E. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, as always, everybody, for your time and attention, and I will see you all very soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.